Okay, so diving in Southern California. All right, so these are the dive sites I'm going to try to cover. Um, if I have time, I also want to touch on the oil rigs too, but I'll, I'll keep my eye on how time is going as well. Okay, um, I am going to start with La Jolla Shores. Um, it is a site that I dive the most. It's very easy to get to. It doesn't take boat logistics. You can dive out of the back of your car. Um, and uh, it's just a, been a preference for a long time. And there can be some really cool stuff there. Okay. So this is a view of La Jolla Shores Beach. Let me start that. Um, at the far end of the beach is actually the marine room and the point in the background is La Jolla Cove. Um, but the main spread of the beach is the shores. Um, there's a pier on the very other end, which is Scripps Pier. And that pier is also a lineup for a drop point um, when you are diving in the shores. Uh, the shores requires about a 10 to 15 minute surface swim. Uh, that's how you get to the canyon edge. If basically you need to go there if you wanna see anything cool. Other than that, it's just sand. Classes are also held here on weekends. It can be a little bit of a zoo, but if you get there early, it's not a problem. Um, this is kind of just a, a view of Vallecito Street um, straight ahead. Um, that is the street where all the locals fight for parking. Uh, it's always a battle between the swimmers and the divers for the early morning water time, but it's close to the showers and the bathrooms, uh, which is really nice. Kellogg Park is right there. That's where the classes gear up. Um, and sometimes the recreational divers as well, but the parking lot isn't far. If you can't get closer parking than that, it's not a big deal. Okay. Now for our topography for this regular site, uh, I can't promise you this kind of is all the time, but it gives you an idea. We, it, it has walls that step down uh, actually pretty deep, but the, most of the life tends to be more, uh, ten, tends to be around 35 to 75 feet. Uh, average vis here is 10 to 15 feet. This is kind of a freak of nature day, um, but it is a great macro site. There's tons of macro diving here. Uh, I do carry a GoPro with me uh, in case, you know, that whale or shark decides to swim through and I can get a footage more than just an eyeball. And here I have some of the creatures that you can expect to see uh, at La Jolla Shores. We have tons of different nudibranchs. Sarcastic fringe heads, pipefish, uh, sheep crab, sometimes squid during certain seasons, uh, baby sea bass, rays, octopus. I love the octopus. <laughs> They're very cute. Bat rays seasonally, crabs, kelpfish, pesky eels, halibut, more sarcastic fringe heads, horn sharks, nudies. And some are just seasonal too that we don't only see sporadically over time. I did avoid putting the photos of the Pacific seahorse in, which were here for two years and makes us very sad that they are not here anymore. Okay. So this is kind of the La Jolla Shores recap. It is a shore dive. Classes are held here just to be aware of. There is a 10 to 15 minute surface swim involved. It drops you in about 30 to 35 feet of water. And then from there, you just take a 270 degree heading to hit the canyon. Um, the natural navigation is kind of a cool little tidbit. We have sand dollar beds and they point in the direction of the shore or the uh, canyon because they like to filter feed with the path of least resistance. So you can always kind of follow the uh, sand dollars too if something happens to your compass. Uh, the shores is also known for the fact that you're kind of doing a swimming safety stop. You don't do a traditional safety stop because the swim in is so long at 20 feet, you do the entire safety stop swimming. Uh, stingrays are also very prevalent here, so uh, doing the stingray shuffle is really, really important. Uh, photo tips, it's, I mean, it's primarily macro, like you always can do macro here no matter what. Uh, wide angle is possible on some days, but always, always, always bring a dive light because there's so many nooks and crannies at the site. And then I just wanted to include some of my favorite encounters. Um, octopus are one of my favorite things, especially during mating season. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time. Okay, next up is the marine room. Okay, so that the marine room, you kind of enter in at the sandy area. 
that area right there is the shallow rocky reef and it pans over to the La Jolla Cove um, at that point. The dark spot in the right, the bottom uh, right is actually the South Canyon. Um, and disclaimer, this is not normal viz at all. I fluke of nature day, I got the drone up and we were actually able to see the lines of where the canyon was. It was pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, we primarily snorkel and free dive the sandy shallows and reef area. Um, the South Canyon is a deeper dive with the same features as the shores. Um, and you can scuba past the rocky reef. It's pretty shallow, it's like 30 feet. And viz can be very, very challenging over there because of the direction that it sits. Um, and also the, our shallows here can get stirred up very, very easily. Uh, I also feel that you can see a lot of the same things scuba diving here as you can just snorkeling and free diving. So it's kind of nice to not have the extra gear to go look for it. Uh, parking here is street only. Uh, there's no bathrooms, no showers. It's kind of more of a local spot. Um, so you have to Google the Marine Room restaurant. And then there's a pathway that lines up with the restaurant that you walk down to get to this part, part of the beach. Uh, and don't bother snorkeling here. If major waves are rolling in over the reef, you will just get nauseous, the viz will be crap, and you will be sad. Uh, let's see. Oh, definitely do stingray shuffle here. I think this is a breeding ground because we see little babies here. So this is a huge one to make sure that you need to shuffle on. I have gotten hit here. I was pregnant. It sucked. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I do like to think that my son's going to have some sort of superpower with stingray venom in them, though. We'll see. Okay. So um, the sandy area of the marine room is known for the leopard shark congregation. So they're technically here year round, but towards the end of summer, early fall, into the fall actually, is we see this huge congregation of the females. And supposedly it's because uh, they come in shallow to the warmer waters to incubate their young. And they are shallow, like you could probably be knee deep and see them. <laughs> so no diving for this, just swim. Uh, also, this parley parking by the marine room is the best, but because it's only snorkeling gear, if you need to park in the La Jolla Shars lot, it's not a huge deal. Uh, let's see. So diving the, um, the deep South Canyon area, you're going to get the same stuff as the shores, but diving the reef or snorkeling the reef, you get other things. Um, like you'll see seven gills here, um, seasonally, the topes, allegedly the giant sea bass, schools of fish, horn sharks, lobster, harbor seals, sea lions. Um, this is very hit or miss here. Um, but it still can be a really great day if you can get a, cl a clear one. As for one of my favorite encounters here, um, another weird thing that happens, we can't really pinpoint when, but it only seems to be prevalent for like a week at a time. And we affectionately call it the Topnado. So apparently this is another type of mating aggregation and it happens just briefly and they normally like to be in the worst viz, but it's pretty neat if you can capture it. Um, when someone posts about it on one of the forums, then it's like a beeline with all the locals to try to get out there and see it again. Okay, so our recap for the marine room, it's a shore dive or snorkel. Mostly locals um, come here. Uh, diving, you can do deeper in the canyon, but it's still gonna be the same with the shores without the amenities. Uh, mostly we just snorkel here. You want to go over the reef by the caves and stay over the sand for the leopards and definitely stingray shuffle here. I've only really done wide angle at the marine room so I'm looking for bigger things. Next up is the Yukon. Um, this is a Canadian destroyer. Let me turn the volume up on this. It was actually meant to be an artificial reef, but the story says that she decided to sink the day before her big sinking party and she just kind of fell down on her own on her side, not in the way that they meant to do it. Um, now she sits on her side a few miles from shore. It is an advanced dive. Um, the top of the wreck sits at about 60 feet and the bottom of the wreck sits around 100. 
Uh, it's known for low vis and surge and current, but has some amazing structure in life. The storms over the last few years have actually torn off some of parts of the towers, but it's still very much intact, like the majority of it. So it's still a really cool one to visit. Um, on those rare, really good vis days, you can get some pretty epic wide angle shots. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, you can go inside this rep, but I really would say you shouldn't do it unless you are specifically certified to do so. It sits on its side, it can get silted out very easily. So if you don't know what you're doing, it could be very, very dangerous. So definitely make sure you are certified before you decide to enter this one. Uh, let's see. This is also um, a good macro site. There's lots of little nudibranchs on here. The anemones are amazing, the rockfish. Um, so it can be very cool to do either right angle or macro here. Uh, the, uh, the boats that go out on this boat is uh, Water Horse Charters and Marissa Charters will do um, dives out to this ship. And there's three mooring balls. At least normally there's three mooring balls on it that you can drop on in different parts of the dive to the dive on. And here's a look at a little bit more of the structure. Just in photographs, they do have flags on it. That was a joke someone did one year. <laughs> Lots of fish. There is a dolphin cut out that you could technically swim down all the way to the bottom. It's a straight shot, but that's probably the only thing I would recommend doing if you've never really done rock penetration stuff before. And then the Weirdest thing that I found on the Yukon actually was a long time ago, it was back in 2012, but it was a huge mola mola. It's the first and probably the last one I've seen of that size. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool at the time. So our recap on the Yukon, it is a boat dive. You want to contact either Water Horse or Marissa Charters. It's definitely an advanced dive. Uh, nitrox is definitely recommended. It can have low vis, surge, and current. It does sit on its side. The dolphin cutout is kind of cool. And definitely try to be REC certified if you plan on going inside the REC. Uh, macro or wide angle is going to be great and definitely a dive light as well. Okay, Point Loma Cal. Point Loma has a ton of dive sites, so it's kind of hard to be specific about them. Um, so the best thing is to kind of check the water horse or the Marissa, uh, Marissa schedule to see what they have going on. Let's see, let me get this going. Some photos. But they have thick kelp forest, a rocky bottom topography, some cool drop offs. Um, they have lots of macro stuff. And you could probably get some dramatic wide angle too with the sea fans and the um, different kelp shots. One of my favorite things is seven gills. And they are technically in our waters year round, but there's certain times of year they're easier to see than others. Uh, this one lives off season when we saw it. That kind of just shows like how quick and close they like to come in. Like they've come out of nowhere, they like to check you out and they like to move on. So it's a really neat encounter if you're lucky enough to see it. Um, so recap, uh, Point Loma is definitely a boat dive. You have our two boat charters. Um, we love the kelp here on the rocky topography. Uh, seven gills are, can be seasonal and you can definitely do macro or wide here. Um, this was probably one of my favorite recaps that I just had to pull off my Instagram. Um, and basically we were completely in an off season. I was with, helping dive master for shark allies and we were just hoping we were gonna see it. Okay, that, I mean, he just came out of nowhere. It was awesome. Okay, next up is, how am I doing on time? Okay, we're okay. Uh, Coronado Islands. So the Coronado Islands is about an hour and a half boat ride from San Diego. Water Horse Charters, as far as I know, is the only boat that does it. Um, passports are required and you have to have them on the boat with you. And there are multiple dive sites here, but my favorite will always be the Goofy Sea Lions. Uh, there's a great colony that resides here. Um, dive sites can cater to both the newer and advanced diver. 
but you'll still generally find me in 10 feet of water staring at sea lion pups. So I also have some photos I've taken while at the Coronados. They're just so much fun and so playful. Oh, and be prepared to be chewed on. That happens as well. I think I have some of it here. Um, and you can see sea lions there year round, but pupping season is definitely the crazier time. Okay, so a quick recap on that boat drive. Uh, it's about an hour and a half to get there. As far as I know, Water Horse Charters is the only one that does it. And it's just an amazing sight to see the sea lions. And you always, we always have clearer water down there too. So it's kind of nice when we've been stuck in five to 10 foot of biz for a while. Okay, Channel Islands. Um, this is a really big topic. We could probably talk about the Channel Islands all <laughs> in just one presentation. So I'm gonna try to keep it brief. Um, there are eight islands, for those of you that don't know, I've only been to a handful of them. All are boat dives except Catalina, which can be done as a shore dive. Um, all seem to have really great kelp, uh, beautiful sea fans, abundance of life. It, it, it's really one of my favorite places to dive. Um, I have uh, loads of tips actually for if you want to do a shore dive um, and do the whole ferry over to the island. So if you plan on do that, doing that, definitely email me if you haven't done it already. Um, I have lots of tips to help make that process easier. Um, yeah, I'm actually trying to put together a guide because I actually get that question a lot from people of how to dive the shore from Catalina. Uh, primarily though, I do drive up to Long Beach and take one of the boats out of there. Uh, with the exception of Horizon Charters, which is in San Diego, but they're a really nice level board that will go do multi-day trips out on um, the islands. Here is some photos that I've taken at various islands over the years um, between San Clemente, Santa Barbara, uh, Santa Cruz, and Catalina. And then there are the harbor seals. Uh, they're just the cutest little sausages, um, but they're typically pretty shy. So every once in a long time, we get a player like this one. going to be one of my favorite encounters. <laughs> okay. This next one I wanted to show is Farnsworth Bank. Um, it's a pinnacle off Catalina Island. It's a small site. It can have some ripping currents. It's not always diveable, um, but it's a great uh, spot to see the famous purple hydrocoral, which is beautiful. Um, it's also an advanced dive site. The pinnacle, the top of the pinnacle is at 60 feet. Um, but really the coolest stuff is 75 feet and deeper. Um, I wanted to show this video because this was the most epic day I've ever had there. And even the photographers that I was with that day were all insanely experienced, have been all over the world. And we were all in such awe, all of it, not a single flash was going off the first 10 minutes of the dive. We were all just sitting there dumbstruck. So I had to show this video as well. You only live once, so don't waste your time. 
It's done with your time. I'll just, we'll never forget our captain said, you know, I'm trying to find the bottom. I just don't see it. It looks really weird. I don't know if it's just bad viz or something super cloudy down there. It was a wall of fish, huge giant wall of fish. That's why he couldn't see the bottom. <laughs> okay. And then this last one is a really crappy proof video of one of the most incredible <laughs> local encounters I've had. Um, I was solo diving at Ship Rock and that's off Catalina. And this encounter happened about 70 feet of water. <laughs> Viz was about 25 feet at the time with like particulate. He was right on the edge of Viz, um, but I managed to get proof on the GoPro. Um, it checked me out from a distance, slowly swam away. Um, we found out actually shortly after this dive that I was a few weeks pregnant um, with my son. So now we tell him he's already swam with a great white shark. So that's our, I did a quick recap on that. Um, there are eight islands in total. The ones I've been to are the Catalina, San Clemente, Santa Barbara, and Santa Cruz Island. Um, Catalina only can be a shore dive. You need to take the ferry over and all the rest are boat dives. So there's lots of diving in Southern California. I think I have, I do have enough time. I could talk about the oil rigs real quick too, but um, the, there's also uh, in our wreck alley, we have the Ruby E wreck. Um, Scripps Canyon is a really cool one to check out, Quest Rock. The Nos Tower, which is another jungle gym that's in San Diego. There's tons of sites in Point Loma. If you're a technical diver, uh, Marissa Charters tends to uh, cater a little bit more to uh, the tech divers and do some pretty cool sites from what I understand. Um, and then there's more wrecks out of Long Beach. I don't know why that got cut off. Um, and then La Jolla Cove. I didn't really talk about La Jolla Cove because it's not my favorite thing to do in the world. <laughs> so if you have questions about it, I'm happy to answer them, but that's why. Um, so San Diego boats are Marissa and Water Horse. And as for um, out of Long Beach, Giant Stride, Magician, Sea Ray, Pack Star, Peace. And uh, the Spectre, I believe is another one. I can't read much of my notes, but um, I've only been on a handful of those boats, but I've heard good things about them. And then I'm going to just skip over this real quick because I did save some oil rig stuff so you guys can see it. Um, the oil rigs are in Long Beach. They're only accessible by boat. These are advanced dives because they're considered bottomless. Um, they also have, can have like ripping current and surge. Uh, the dive boats have to live drop you because they cannot anchor here. So they basically get you as close to the rig as possible, drop you and you have to swim under the structure. Same thing when you surface, you have to come up wait for them to call you over to tell you it's safe before you can swim back to the boat. Um, but the, well, I know it sounds kind of scary, but it's it's not scary if you follow directions. And this is literally like the, a giant jungle gym for scuba divers and it can have so much life on it, so many weird things. And I haven't even seen the best viz days. I've heard rumors that you can get 80 to hundred foot viz here. I think the best viz I've had is 60 feet and I was stoked on that. So I get excited to keep coming back to see what else I can find here. So with oil rigs, it is a boat dive. You need to be advanced. Um, definitely, I choose to do nitrox on this because I like to go a little, stay a little deeper, a little longer. But the currents and sur surge can be gnarly. So just be aware of your surroundings. And there is a live drop um, with no anchor. So it sounds scarier than it is if you've never done it. Um, it's not a huge deal. Other than that, I was gonna back this up real quick. Uh, I do a lot of posting on social media, primarily Instagram, because it's easiest uh, in the stories, especially if I'm out diving, I'll mention conditions and what we're currently seeing. So if you guys follow along, you can find out what's going on, going on down in Southern California. You also can email me if you plan on trying to make a trek down and you're like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> and and I'll hop, I'm happy to answer any questions if I can. So um, with that, I was going to open it up to questions if anyone has any, and I can stop the share unless I need to bring it back for anyone who wanted to see something specifically. That was awesome. I have a question. You said that the, um, there's a lot of kelp. Uh, at this time, you guys still have good healthy kelp for us? Yeah, it's not at all sites, but there I've been pleasantly surprised on um, parts of Catalina. 
Um, San Clemente the last few times has had kelp and I haven't been to Santa Barbara in a while, but I've heard that it has kelp. Is that an improvement? What you have seen, is that an improvement than it was say, you know, a year ago? From a year ago. Um, I'm oh, gonna say probably about a seam from a year ago. It was pretty sparse there a few years ago. It was really sad. Like everything was deteriorating because the water was so warm, um, but they've come back a lot thicker. Uh, I don't think it's anything what it used to be, but it's much better than it was. I had a question about where it's popular to do training dives. Is it still like off the casino in Catalina Islands, one of the main places, or where where are the other places that are popular? From all uh, from what I understand, it's a uh, definitely Casino Point. La Jolla Shores is a huge training site, and I want to. I'm not someone else. I'd have to ch chime in if they know. I think um, in the Laguna area is it Veterans Park might be the other training area. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. What are your bottom type, uh, the bottom temps like there throughout the year? Is it pretty stable or does it warm up in the summer and the fall? It warms up on more of the surface, but I would say that we're pretty consistently mid 50s. Thanks. Occasionally we'll have some fluke of nature water cell wells that come in that warm it up a little bit, but it's a pr pretty consistent in the 50s. I am a dry suit diver. I whisked out a long time ago. You mentioned shore dives in Catalina, but other than a casino, are there other places to shore dive there? If you want to make the surface swim um, or just the long swim, there is a wreck. I think it's called the Valiant. That's off of Casino Point. Um, I never actually, I think it's called Lovers. That's around the corner. I've seen people snorkel there. I haven't actually dove, but um, unless you take a like kayak out. I'm, I, I only really know about Casino Point. Um, I hit up Casino Point looking for giant sea bass when they're here. And that's always been my primary goal. Anything else, I'd rather take a boat from Long Beach. <laughs> How many different varieties of sharks do you find down there? Like that are fairly common? Uh, so let's see, leopards, horn sharks, those are probably the most prevalent. There is also the seven gills, the topes, um, the gray smooth hound sharks. Um, a thresher has been seen at La Jolla Shores in the past. And if there wasn't pictures, I would have called them a liar, but there are photos. <laughs> um, some people have said they've seen juvenile great whites. Um, we do have breeding grounds for them further north. Um, I do have drone footage of them. I don't I, they just look very similar as juveniles to taupe sharks. So I, I would never know if they really saw a great white or if it might have been a taupe shark. So uh, possibly uh, also a seven, or sorry, great white. Um, oh, and swell sharks. Those are the other ones. Do they ever see blues again? They used to have a lot of blue sharks down there, but it seems like fewer and fewer. Not off of like any sort of dive site. Like you'd have to go out on a boat blue water to go see blues and probably have to chum for them. How does visibility vary by season? When I used to live in Santa Barbara, uh, the fall was by far the best and uh, you'd get you know brown water in the winter often and green water in the spring and summer. Is that true down in LA or Orange County as well? Mm -hmm. It is. Um, we okay. love the fall winter weather, uh, sorry, the winter conditions for the colder water and clarity, but we can have more turbulent surface and bigger waves so we could be diving fewer times because of that but we it's definitely better clarity wise in the winter and we get algae blooms in the spring this year it hasn't been as bad i think we just recently had one minor red tide but if you drop below it i guess it was still decent okay thanks mm -hmm. any other questions I just wanted to thank you very much for your presentation. I'm gonna to have to get going, uh, but thank you very much. And I'll, I'll tune in later and I'll check out some of what you said. Great, okay. thank you for joining oh, in. Thank you. Hope to see you up here. Take care. You now too. we'll see you down there. Bye-bye. Okay. I'm sorry, did someone else say something? I just heard a buzz. Uh, Point Loma, so when does the seven gill church uh, come, come in that area? 
So they come into the marine room shallows in around like end of March to May-ish to mate. And that's when you can see them super shallow if conditions are permitting and you can see them just snorkeling. Like they will come into like 10 feet of water. Um, it's a pretty hot commodity for people to run out and try to go see them. But again, springtime conditions can be challenging. So sometimes it's a rarity. They are in Point Loma year round, but it, they're a little bit more elusive at certain times of the year. I feel like when you're getting closer to mating season, we're seeing a lot more reports of people seeing them in the kelp deeper. And if you are a hunter, you probably see them quite a bit. And then did you say that you don't like to go to uh, La Jolla Cove? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, again, I'm a dry suit diver and a photographer. I have a lot of equipment. Um, the Cove has um, some decent stairs that you have to get down with all that equipment and back up. Um, the beach that they have right there has a sandy slope and then it goes to a rocky edge. That sandy slope is like quicksand. And so if you don't do quick steps coming up, it's probably like a, not as bad of a version of Monastery Beach in Monterey. Um, but I've gotten caught pretty bad in that. Um, you could head out in the cove and it'll be totally calm and everything will be great. And you come back in and waves are crashing in and you're, you're basically going to be riding a wave into the cove. And there is something called the cove crawl, which a lot of people have know about and have done where you literally have to just hands and knees crawl out. And I just, with the camera equipment, I just don't want to do it anymore. And since this, that site in general is pretty shallow, like most of it's probably 35 feet. You can get out deeper to maybe 50, but you have to do a pretty decent swim. I can only, I can probably count on one hand the amount of good dives I've had there. So I just choose not to go. <laughs> I'll free dive it without the, all the extra gear, but I don't like scuba diving the cove. So what percentage of your diving is beach diving versus boat diving? I would probably say like 70% of my diving is shore diving. Okay. Um, we have a, a dawn, we call it a dawn patrol crew. Um, basically the crazy people that will get up at 5.30 in the morning and get a dive in before work. Wow. And so we'll be out there, if, if the conditions are good, we'll be out there weekly. Wow. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, uh, thank you again, Jamie, uh, for the awesome presentation. It definitely has uh, reassured why I need to get back down to SoCal. Haven't only been down there once, so I definitely have uh, a bunch of places that I need to go see. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And definitely reach out to me if you have questions and you're heading down. I'm happy to answer them. Thank you.